Hi, so today is the day for index numbers. We said that we will look at consumer price index, so it's an index. Wholesale price index, it's an index. You have index of industrial production, you have index of GDP, you have indices of so many things, so many things. So it's important for a student of economics to learn what is an index number so that uh, any time that you are asked to construct an index, you know exactly what you are talking about. So uh, let me just take you to this um, uh, sheet that I have prepared for you. Uh, uh, just a moment, sorry. Yeah, so I'll have to share it with you first. And um, I want to show you this, yes. Okay, so uh, if I tell you that the GDP in uh, uh, 2001 was 13,5983 and then it became 14,3444 uh, and then in the next year it became 14,5982. Fine, I mean, big, big numbers and all these are in crore, so even more. So, okay, so you have all this, but it doesn't really make much sense to look at such huge figures. Figures should be readable, figures should be understandable, figures should be analyzable. You should be able to understand that does this mean increase of what? Increase of 10% or increase of 2%. If the inflation rate, as I told you, is 10%, I better be worried. If it is 2%, I better not be worried. You give me figures like this and there is no way I will be able to understand whether this is 2 years or 4 years or 10 years. Or sorry, 2%, 4% or 10%. And if I can't understand it, then you have not reported properly. So then what do I do? So that is where you use index numbers. Index numbers basically make all these numbers readable, okay? It is just transforming them to a number which is more understandable, more readable, okay? So the formula for index number is value for current year divided by value for base year multiplied by 100, okay? So value for current year, value for base year multiplied by 100. So let's take this year this year value so if i want to calculate so i will say is equal to value for current year yes so we will take this and then we will divide it by value for base year and then we will multiply it by 100 and the number that we get is 107 as far as the base year is concerned, base year is the current year for that year. So you will take the formula as is equal to the value for the current year divided by the value for the base year multiplied by 100. And um, wait a minute, I think I didn't write the formula properly. Uh, multiplied by 100. And the answer is 100. Remember one thing, the index number for base year is always 100, okay? And after that, it increases or decreases whatever, the base year index number has to be 100. And this is how you arrive at it. You take the value on the denominator and nominator the same, multiply it by 100, okay? So now, guess, as far as this year is concerned, what are we going to do? So we are going to say, is equal to this because this we have to consider and then what do i divide it by this number or this number what do you think it's always a base year right so we will divide it by the base year and then we will multiply it by 100 and the answer that we get is 107.657 so basically for two consecutive years, the change in inflation was not that much. So it remains 107. So that next year was something which was a nice year. Okay. 
so this is what you learn and this is how you make index numbers okay you take the uh, current value you divide it by the value of the base year multiply it by 100 and boom here you go you have the entire series of index numbers in front of you it can be 20 years it can be 120 years it doesn't matter you just have to calculate it like this understood okay now i told you when i was telling you about cpi that you can't have a base year which is too distant in past because it stops having any relevance at all you have to keep updating the base year so now how do i update the base year and it's not necessary that I would always have all the figures, you know, for the production or whatever that I'm doing, industrial production or GDP or whatever, I, or price. I don't always have the original figures, but I have the index numbers. So what I do is I take these index numbers. So I have index numbers from 1981 and I have index numbers till 2004. And I'm not interested in comparing my 2004 prices with 1981 prices. So 1981, by a base year being 100 is of no relevance to me. I want to change it to 2002. How do I do this? It's exactly the same rationale. So you take, say 2002 is now the base year. So you say the is equal to the index number of current year divided by index number for base year. So here the index number for current year is this divided by index number for base year is also the same. Okay. And multiplied by 100. And now 2002 is 100. So it has become base year. Now based on this, I have to find the value over here. And what will I do? I will do exactly the same thing that I had done before which is I will say is equal to this value divided by the value in the base year multiplied by 100 and I get 162 huge change as far as inflation was concerned then I mean these are not the correct figures I have just generally created them then for this now once again the same thing I will take the current year I will divide it by the value of the base year and I will multiply it by 100 and I get 195. So inflation rate has been extremely high. This is almost hyperinflation, at least from here to here, hyperinflation, from here to here, very high inflation. Okay, so now let's go to the past that, okay, I have inflation and this is how I will calculate the uh, values for the coming years or for the uh, years which are later than the base year but i have index numbers for the other ones also and i want to remember that also i don't want it to be forgotten so then what do i do exactly the same thing that i do i say is equal to current year divided by base year multiplied by 100 and what you get is that that the value which was 100 that time was actually 60 before so you immediately see how much was the inflation rate okay inflation rate or gdp or whatever whatever index you are using this is how you do it okay it is as simple as that there is nothing complicated about index numbers the extremely simple mathematical formula but you should know that okay now uh, one more thing which I just wanted to tell you before I close this lecture is that, that index numbers, price index numbers are very important even for measuring GDP. And you'll ask me why? How does it matter? The reason why it matters is, I'll give you one example. For it, okay. Uh, first, let me stop sharing. Yes. So, uh, let me first explain to you what I'm trying to say when I say that your GDP numbers and your price index numbers are related with each other or are supposed to be desirably supposed to be related with each other. Why? Okay. So the reason is that, that um, say for example, there is a nation where they are producing say five tanks. Okay. So they are producing five tanks 
and these five tanks are costing say 250 lakhs okay so five tanks 250 lakhs so forget about the lakhs figure of it 250 so 250 multiplied by 5 is 1 lakh 25000 right uh, I'm, I'm, Okay, let's just make it even simpler. So 25 multiplied by 5 and it will be 125, right? Very simple. So uh, 1250 is what is the GDP of that time because if this is the only thing that the economy was producing, GDP is equal to price multiplied by quantity. So the price is say 250, quantity was 5. So the total GDP was 1250. Now, say the quantity produced of tanks remain the same, which is five. But the cost of tanks increased from 250 to 500. So now from one to five zero, it becomes two five zero zero. So if I am looking at just the GDP figures, I would say that, wow, it was one two five zero last year and it is 2500 this year almost 100 percent increase in gdp wow 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 the country is progressing like nobody's business and we are at the top of the world the fact is that that is not the quantity of production which increased it's the inflation which increased and a nation which is facing inflation of 100 percent is not a wow wow nation it's a sad 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 nation because it has hyperinflation okay so you can't look at the nominal gdp figures nominal gdp figures is current prices multiplied by quantity you can't look at that because it will completely mislead you like this so every time when we are talking about gdp growth we always talk about what is called real gdp and how do we find out we find it out by deflating our gdp so you should learn as economists to deflate your GDP. If you don't know how to deflate, then you would make tremendous mistakes in looking at the growth figures, okay? So let me just show you once again. Yeah, so the formula for deflating GDP is nominal value of gdp for the current year divided by index number for the current year that index number can be the cpi number that index number can be the wpi number whichever you have decided right now as i said the nation usually uses cpi combined so but you take the nominal value of gdp which is the current prices multiplied by the quantity produced uh, divided by the index number for that year, that current year, and then what you would get is what is called real GDP. So current prices multiplied by quantity produced is called nominal GDP, deflated value of GDP by using the index number is called the real GDP because it is real. It is not just an illusion which is created by the inflation. Understood? So every time you are looking at the gdp growth please remember first you will deflate the gdp figures and after that you will look at the growth of gdp growth rates of gdp and everything we have already seen in the lecture for gdp but remember growth rates cannot be counted until you have translated the nominal gdp figures into real gdp figures and after that look at the growth rates okay so this was the significance of index numbers because unless you have that, there are many, many things that you can't do. You can't understand lots of your figures and you can't deflate your GDP, okay? So you will never come to know a real GDP. So this is what was the significance. So with that, I will end today's lecture and we will see you next time. Bye. Have a nice day.